I'd like to call the to uh, committee to order at uh, 6.03 p.m. Uh, I'd like to a motion to consider the minutes of the June 13th uh, meeting or held on yeah held on June 13th so moved seconded uh, item number two consider approval of the let's see number three Trustee, discuss Trust, government Trustee tech Lass. contract Trustee yes. you want to call the roll on that one. Oh, you, can, you can do a voice vote on that that's all those right in favor? All, all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries uh, number three, discuss government temp contract, community uh, development director, Dave. Sure. Uh, thank you, Trustee Glotz. This is um, the renewal of our contract with GovTemps for the interim community development director position, which everybody knows is Paula. So this is really, um, you know, it's exactly the same as last year. Um, there is an increase built in of 2.5%. And as was last year, you know, the anticipation being that we, we will re-recruit a community development director that at some point uh, Paul would go back to her old position uh, and her old <clears throat> pay rate at that point. So this contract also addresses this. So really the same as last year, and I'm happy to answer any questions uh, on this. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, no. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second it. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, number four, discuss contract for inspection plan review services, uh, building official. Paula, could you take that? Yes, sir. Um, you know, we recently employed Ken Bowers, our building official slash building manager. He has tendered his resignation. Last day will be July 14th, uh, which was just a two-week notice, just so we can't have any gap in services. We had excellent service from Rick Dandan. Uh, providing us um, contractual services. The fee schedule remains the same. He told me he can start on the 17th. That's what this kind of, so it's pretty much an extension of the way we were operating before. Okay. I had a question on that. I know I'm not on, not on this committee. Did, um, was there a moving expense allowance given to the? Uh, I believe there the was. Yeah. Is there a contractual provision that he's got to stay a certain length of time to get it? <coughs> There is not, and um, in the future we'll, we'll build that in. Obviously, this was a pretty unusual situation. Right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a real short amount of time. Yeah. Maybe we could talk to the lawyer about some kind of a, or, you know, keep part of it from the final check or something. I guess. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, no. I'd like to make a motion to approve. So, second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, receive comments from the public. If there are none. I'd like to make a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. He's adjourned. This is just that the obviously the Rick Dan Dan contracts on <clears throat> the board consent agenda tonight, and so we'll add. Paul's contract will not be on until next week. So and we do want to thank her for her continued excellent service. Yeah. I heard Mike I'd like to call a special meeting of the Public Works Committee to order. I'd like a motion to consider approval of the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held on June 13, 2017. Second. It's not. Hold on. Are you official? <clears throat> Your official time was 610. It's 609. It's 607 on my clock. Okay. Well, wait a minute, Brian. There's a mad rush coming in, so. So you get them rolled in? Yeah, don't you? Uh, no, I don't think you can do that. I think we can. It doesn't have to be posted that
some of the chat back in there. Six time, Brian. You're good to go, Brian. Okay. Try this again. <laughs> like to open a meeting of the Public Works Committee. Do a motion to approve the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting held on June 13, 2017. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And number three, discuss contractual engineering work plan. Kevin, you want to go over that? Yeah, the, at the previous Public Works Committee, um, we were directed to do an RFQ for engineering services for the Village of Tinley to see if we could split it between other engineering firms. Uh, we did that. We met on November 17th. Uh, we conducted, I believe it was, five interviews. Uh, we got it down to these three um, engineering firms. Um, so their services. Were approved by uh, the interview team so we're presenting to break this down into uh, three engineering firms um, Baxter and Woodman Christopher Burke and Robinson Robinson engineering uh, we're, our, uh, we're looking at breaking it down into certain services as potable water for Baxter and Woodman Christopher Burke for general services storm and sanitary and Robinson Engineering for roadway and parking lot improvements. Um, attached is, is the fee schedule uh, of each engineering firm. So what we're looking here is for direction on if you agree with splitting the services this way or and just request on how you would like us to proceed with engineering services. Anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, Kevin, how how do we come to the uh, breakdown that's listed? Well, on the breakdown, when we did the RFQ, uh, we looked at every, each engineering services. They all were kind of qualified for each individual service that we have. Uh, I discussed this with the village manager, and we uh, picked these services that way, just to try to make it a split between the three service um, engineer. The village manager, you said? Yeah, me and the village manager sat down. Okay. Yeah, and just, there, I mean, Baxter and Woodman are kind of generally known for being very strong with water. And Chris Burke <coughs> is, is known for being strong with sewer. Okay. That's. In the industry. Yeah. Did we, um, did we, before we did that, Dave, did we look at these rates? Did Baxter and Woodman and Robinson seem to see be in the same ballpark? And uh, Christopher Burke seems to be out of the park. I mean, just for like example, the principals sixty-four dollars more an hour. Your chief surveyors sixty-two dollars more an hour. Your engineering technicians are from seventy-four to eighty-five dollars more per hour for the uh, for those services than we have for uh, Baxter and Woodman or Robinson. And then I, I noticed today uh, under direct costs. I did not see, well, one second. The, of the three engineering firms, it's like the Burke, I see the direct costs. We have uh, copies, paperwork, blueprints, messenger service, delivery service, um, where they're charging for that. And, and they want a 12% profit on, on doing this. I don't see that Robinson or Baxter and Woodman uh, charges for that. and. I don't see in their rates, I don't see them charging us 5% more than what the rates already are um, January 1st of 18, like the, the Burke contract. And the other question behind that, if you can, before you continue, do we figure out the what this is going to do to the budget with these extra costs? 
Was, was that, you know, was the budget reflected for that? Do we know that? Well, you know, it, it, as with any professional services, you're always going to have difference in, in hourly rates. And so it's hard to say, you know, compare one position versus the other. It's really going to depend. Yeah, for example, the principal is higher with, with Chris Burke, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be using them. So it's really going to, when you have a professional service, the hope is, yeah, sometimes you pay a little bit more, but when you pay a little bit more, you're getting a le level of expertise that they can hopefully be more efficient and the total cost is the same. So I guess answering your question, is there, um, is there a reflective change in the budget? No, no, it's, uh, we didn't make any changes to the budget based on, based on this. Well, I would suggest before you want to move forward with a different engineer, mm -hmm. other than Baxter or, um, I'm sorry, make sure I don't say it right, yeah, Baxter and Woodman or Robinson, um, we should see how this is going to affect our bottom line because it's not just the, it's, I don't see it just being the principal. I mean, all their engineers, they're mm -hmm. about $57 more an hour. Your engineering technicians are up to $85 more an hour. Your administrative work is 27. Um, do we know if, uh, is Burke going to charge us when you have them at meetings? I haven't talked to them about that. I don't, Kevin, have you, was that discussed, you know? Or? No, we haven't okay. had the cold, okay. cold group meeting yet at all. Okay. Uh, so we can get more detail on that if we have, uh, bring all the engineering firms in. Yeah, I would assume they they will because if they're going to charge us for a piece of paper and then 12%, I, I would assume that they would pay for an engineer to be here at the same time. Um, well, I, and how about Baxter and yeah. Woodman or Robinson? Do they charge? I don't know, but I mean, I just, here's what I would say. I mean, there's a couple ways to go with this is you could, you know, basically go with the recommendations as is if there is some concern about you know are they charging us for certain meetings or how much are charged for for some of the, the services we can go back and, and talk to them about certain certain positions and, and what they will do for us for meetings uh, but it's so whatever the pleasure of the board is do we know what we spent on engineering last year um, off the top of my head no is um, is Brad here uh, he is oh <laughs> Oops, sorry. Yeah. I'm looking on the, yeah. on the glasses. Uh, yes. It's in excess of a million dollars, correct? It, it, yes. Okay, so if it's, this looks like it's probably anywhere on average from 20 to 30 percent more for everything they do hourly. Plus, it's going to be probably, I would just assume, being conservative, it's going to be a 20 to 30 percent learning curve on extra hours above and beyond what we would, would pay. Um, I like it. The, I like the fact that they do Orland Park, that they're right next door, but this mm -hmm. is a different animal. I mean, that, that $1 million budget is mm -hmm. going to be blown out of the water. Well, two quick things. One is that, uh, again, one of the reasons why we hired a staff engineer is to reduce the overall cost for all of them. So I wouldn't anticipate that we would continue, whether we stuck with one firm or three, that we would have the, the contractual <clears throat> cost. And when we didn't meet with Burke, and I directly told them, I said, look, when you take on these projects, um, the learning cost for taking on these projects needs to be on your dime. So, um, and he agreed. There's no way to police that. You're going to get a, you're going to receive an invoice and basically have no idea if that was, if it's built well, in. Well, we'll have to, you know, compare it to what a similar project is. And uh, yeah, I mean, we'll do, we'll do the best we can, but that's, uh, they are did agree to that. So. Are there like specific concerns that you recommended that we switch? Is there something? Yes, this, this, we've had the villages that had the same engineering firm for over 25 years or longer. What is it? Long, over 30. Over 30 mm -hmm. years, the same no bid, uh, never sought. So that's why we did an RFQ and we got, uh, I believe, 15 firms and we, they narrowed it down. We did interviews um, over a couple month period when, and we came to the conclusion that these three firms would be qualified. When you do an RFQ, it's not based on price, it's based on qualifications. Uh, and like the manager had said, we've got an in-house engineer now which will have a cost savings, not immediately, but over time here, we'll be able to tell the cost savings of having an in-house engineer. And as far as uh, efficiency with the engineer, that's why we decided to split it up between three firms, um, the town of our size and the amount of projects that we have. And we decided, the staff has decided that the expertise for, th for these three firms 
uh, would be best fit as listed here. Like I said, this has been going on since uh, November. November. Yes. Yeah, whether the, the firm's here, I, I understand, Brian, but whether the firm's here one year or 20 years or 30 years, I, I think it comes down to the price and the, the quality. If, if there's something that they're lacking, I say go for it. You know, I mean, we were even, we were in a magazine for the best roads in America. Um, That's why we picked Robinson for to keep the roads. Yeah, we, the public works, the, uh, the 183rd, 80th Ave to LaGrange. Uh, they did uh, post two water tanks at 183rd and Ridgeland. I get it. I, I would recommend to the board that the, or the committee that if that's the, the route that you like to go, then it should be a um, slow transfer so that we're not paying all these fees right at once and we're making such a huge switch in our engineering, which is, is, is the infrastructure is probably one of the most important things to our town. The general services and sanitary, I would leave the same. I would recommend that we do the storm and then maybe slowly start filtering in sanitary, but to switch right from the get-go, which that's what they've done. And what's the, what's general, the general services, what exactly is that pertaining to or, or meaning? What is? It would be like uh, miscellaneous items like easement preparations, uh, anything, um, smaller projects under capital projects. Under, when you said under what? Is under there capital projects. Okay, is there a, uh, is there a dollar amount that we'll use before we determine if we send, um, so you, you have a project that, is there a dollar amount you have to, if it's over that you'll send a, uh, and ask for an estimate from Baxter, Robinson, and Burke? I think that's what we would have to discuss with all three firms on how we want to approach this. If, if that's, if we want to do a larger project <laughs> and we're going out for a seal bid, do we want to bid out the engineering also? Yeah, and I, I, and I, I also have, believe the yeah, council, you've yeah. mentioned that we should do it yeah. over the course of 30 years. Uh, we haven't done actual service contracts per projects, no. and that's something that yeah. he's recommended also. I know you weren't on, but since November, the legal council's uh, voiced his opinion how instead of just getting billed from Robinson like we have for the last 30 years, we'll have an actual professional service contract. Am I correct, Councilor? Yeah, so what I've done and what I've seen in other places when you have multiple engineers, there's two ways you can go. And it's and it's on a project by project basis. This this approve or if, if the committee recommends to go forward with this structure here, you're still going to see the proposals from uh, I don't know the various projects. You know, if you have sewer work going on in 2017, uh, who's doing the, Burke's doing the sewers? Or that would right. be the idea. The the full board would still get the proposal and the contract from Burke for that project. It's just that you're not going, you would not go out to bid. Again, yes, professional sure. services, the idea would be you guys have already vetted this. These are your three. But it's not the final decision. You're still going to get those contracts in front of the full board. So if you don't like the price or something like that, you, you have that opportunity. So um, that, I think, that was the idea, and that's how a lot of towns do it. And again, it's professional service. It doesn't have to be bid. I think you guys did the lead work out in front to get the firms that you like and their expertise and whatnot so you don't have to you as a village spend that additional money bidding out every single project you have firms that you vetted and are qualified however based on that project you know the big pro you know, I'm sure there's an awful lot of road project that you do every year an awful lot of sewer project and things like that those contracts still go to the full board I don't know if that helps clarify it yeah I think the purpose of this is to as much guide us with who to work with on a particular area. Obviously, some of the smaller contracts, assuming the board approves this, if it's under 20,000, that typically wouldn't go to the board. And if it was water, we would give it to Baxter and Woodman. So that's the intention of this guideline. Can I it, and it's a guideline. If it's under yeah. 20,000, I'm okay if you want to list them as general services because they'll make life easier for. Uh, uh, for Kevin and uh, John Urbanski, that I'm okay with that. But to do general services, storm and sanitary, I think we need to, when you're going to pay 25 to 30 percent more per hour, and you're going to be on a learning curve, that 25 to 30 is going to end up. I mean, for we spend a million dollars, you're going to spend maybe 1.4, 1.5 just on the fees and the learning curve. I, I think well, we should stick to the storm and yeah. then slowly trickle them in to go to both. I, I. I can't support that. I mean, 
I mean, the fees the fees sell themselves. Yeah. You know, we got two engineering firms that are that are you know right with you know if Baxter, Robinson, and 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 Burke were all right around give or take five five to ten dollars, then the same fee, then you know that's good. Push it through, but just to do it to change when we're going to pay so much money when we're our goal is to save money, not spend money. <clears throat> yeah, and I guess just my last comment would be. Again, I, I think, in, and the village attorney pointed this out, is that we bring a Burke contract to you, and let's say it's whatever, 40000 for some sewer work, and you think that's too high, <clears throat> then you basically go back to the staff and say, either you know, renegotiate it or, or go to the other firms. I mean, the board ultimately has the say over it, and the really the defining dollar amount is going to be the total amount of the contract, not necessarily the hour rates. And if you aren't happy with what we're paying, then the board doesn't have to accept the contract. Yeah, I, I think we yeah. need to give um, Kevin and John 20000 to work with. Anything yeah. under there, it's their call. If they, yeah. whatever engineering firm they think is best, you know, have at it. They shouldn't have to be wasting their time, you know, bringing it to a board. Anything over mm -hmm. 20 they should, but I'm not comfortable with switching general storm and sanitary when the prices are that much higher. That's why we. That's why we did three companies. You know, we have two other engineering firms that are, are right within it. I, I'm not on this committee, but is it possible that we could kind of these? Are, I guess you're saying are preferred firms, firms that have been vetted that are qualified and could do, I guess, any of these jobs, right? Now that we have a staff engineer, could he say for this job, you know, you could all three sort of give me a price on it. Here's what I'm thinking and then go with that. Is that kind of a possibility? I don't think any of this is set in stone, right? Well, again, the purpose of this is we already we already did that. Essentially, we went through a request for proposals a while ago. And so to do that for each project, um, I mean, again, you have to follow under Illinois. You have to go through a process, qualification-based selection process. I, I think we've already done that. And right. so... Um, what I, I think what we're saying is that we've gone through the process. Here's the areas that we recommend they work in. Ultimately, if one of the firms, whether it's Bacter, Chris Burke, or Robinson, comes in with a contract that goes to the board and it will go to a committee like this and we think it's too high, we have the right to then say we're going to go to those other two companies. Or you could open up a whole new process. And so it, you have the ultimate control by the, through saying yes or no to the contract. Then I think we need to ask Brad if he can adjust those numbers because the one million or whatever's budget it's not gonna is not gonna work with these kind of numbers. And I was a perfect example just for your to answer your question is um, there was a a problem with drainage and got a call and I called Kevin and he sent the, the our own village engineer saved us a ton of money. So stuff like that you know Kevin has at his hand or at his will. Yeah, one th statement I would say, though, um, a lot of general services um, we're going to be handling in-house, so don't get really stuck on general services. Once uh, Ian gets more involved and here a little bit longer and I can give, her a little, give him a little more history, he should be able to pick up a lot of his general service stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if those numbers are set in stone if you actually use some negotiating leverage like, hey, <clears throat> they're charging you for paper. Yeah. Well... <laughs> One of the beauties of having multiple engineering firms is it makes them sharpen their pencil. Makes them sharpen their pencil. And I'm okay yeah. with that, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. before yeah. we move forward, we need to know if that if that pay, if that pencil is going to be sharpened. If it's not, then we have two key engineering firms that we have to look at: Baxter and Woodman and Robinson. If they're not going to sharpen a pencil, and not only that, we have to look and see what the budget is. I mean, it's it's going to be a big budget adjustment. Again, I don't think you you have to really look at it contract by contract basis. Well, you don't, yeah. Brad. If the if the prices are if the prices are twenty five to thirty percent more, and we spent I forget what Brad said how many million, uh, or maybe even Brian said a million or one point yeah. one or something, and the rates are higher and they're and they don't know our town. It's conceivable you. Simple math, it's going to be more than one. It's going to be one more than 1.1. It's not going to be the same price unless they're going to be that fast. If they want to work, they'll give us a competitive quote, no matter what the hourly rate is. I mean, that's a, 
And if they overprice it, then we say no. I mean, I. Okay, well then yeah. can we have them adjust yeah. these numbers before we, you want to consider to move forward? I, I, we've heard that, you know, I've heard yeah. that before. And unless I see it in writing, you, no, we, but can, I we think can't we're, assume. We're, we're, we're talking two different things. I, you know, the hourly rates, that's what they pay people. But the key thing is what they charge us per job. And somebody could charge 20%, they pay their people 20% more, but if they can do the work in a contract for the same amount, then do we really care what they, we pay them, what they pay them? I'm we just care about the total contract. Yeah, they're gonna look at the contract and they're gonna say, I think it's gonna take 45 <coughs> hours to complete this, uh -huh. this job. And they're gonna go through their line items, how much is the principal engineer, how much is an engineer five, how much is a surveyor? How much is uh, a CAD manager? How much is an administrative assistant? And then they're gonna they're gonna input that, and that's gonna how they're gonna get their number. So I don't see that changing. I think otherwise they wouldn't have these rates. No, What's I know, but I think we're again this in the competitive market. If somebody wants work, they'll and you say, you know, you need to be at this dollar. Either they'll be at that dollar, or you go somewhere else. So if they need anyway, it. I don't. Okay. All right. Anybody else on the committee have any comments? No. If uh, if not, I'd like to make a motion to accept the the con contractual engineering work uh, as projected, and also give uh, Kevin the ability and the village manager to discuss uh, the fees with uh, Christopher Burke. Do I have a second? Second it. All in favor? Aye. N nay. Motion carries Aye. two to one. Aye. Motion carries. Number four, discuss awarding contract for irrigation maintenance at village-owned properties. Kevin, you want to talk about the bids that went out? The bids that came in, I should say? Yeah, the bids came in. These are for the medians and um, buildings around the village um, that we own and maintain. This is for the irrigation maintenance, um, startup, shutdown, and any other maintenance that needs to be done if a sprinkler head breaks or anything else. Uh, the low bidder was Aquamist uh, at 28,907. Um, Heller and Yach, um, they didn't qualify with their bidding. They didn't complete the specifications correctly. So they, those bids were thrown out. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, uh, Kevin, we spoke earlier about the, uh, for the maintenance, uh, falling under prevailing wage. The uh, company, I checked, they are signatory to Plumbers Local 130. Okay. Um, but I was told that they have to do a certified payroll regardless as long as we're paying for any of it. So if we could just look into that. The company, I heard good things about the company. It just I just want to make sure that they're paying the, the proper rates. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll, we'll okay. check that and we'll check the contract on that. Thanks, Bye. Kevin. Okay. So mo motion to approve uh, Aquamist Plumbing and Lawn Sprinkling Company out of Dalton for 28,000. Second. 907. All in favor? Aye. 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 Discuss uh, 2017 crack sealing program. The low bid was uh, Denler and Company. Okay, we went out for bid on this and the we get received two bids um, from Denler from Mokina was 158224. Uh, SKC Construction was 352672. Our engineer's estimate was 15801.25. So we are recommending Denler to do the crack sealing program for the 2018 physical year. Any questions? Hey, who gave that estimate? Uh, that would be Robinson Engineering. Okay, so they were within two hundred dollars. Correct. All right. So a motion to approve uh, Denler. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Receive comments from the public. Anyone had wish to address the board in regards to the public works agenda? Um, you know, I was looking over this information when it was posted, and I work in the auto industry, and, and cost savings are required every year. It's uh, I prepare things for. Our, our sourcing board, I, I try to get things pushed through. I am, com I don't understand what you guys are doing with breaking up something into three separate pieces. I understand, I like your idea if you're really gonna be 
getting bids every time you do a big project, and and you're going to use these people to get all three bids each time. But I'm pretty sure, you, although I don't think that's what's going to happen because it doesn't sound like that's what you're going to do. Um, I completely agree with what Trustee Glotz is saying here. These rates, every one of them. I did this. I looked at every one of these rates. I don't understand. I'd like to see. I guess I don't know if it comes from you guys or who puts this. Who who does comes up with why you want to make this change? And I get it that it used to be the old administration's per, somebody they wanted and was 30 years. And I think it's great that you're going to review that. But just to change because we don't like that. I'm confused. I feel like you're going to cost us the taxpayers a lot more money. There's no way breaking up into three separate groups. Every time we, if we have to pay them just to come to a meeting, now we're going to have to pay a couple different firms because we need the guy that does the water, the guy. I've never ever heard of, people are, are reducing levels, not in, enlarging areas. They have three different people that are going to be responsible. This, I'd really like to understand how you see this as a, why you're doing this, because it's not a cost savings. It's absolutely going to cost us taxpayers more money, and I would like to know why. If they're not doing a good job, who we've used, or what the reason is. Because please, you guys have to look a little bit deeper at some of this stuff. <coughs> this is not going to be a cost savings, and I guarantee, because I will watch this over the next year and, and, and see where these savings are, including in adding a new engineer, which I thought was a great idea. But doing this, what you're doing now, is yeah. I'm telling you, there's no way it's going to be a there'll, there'll be no need for one of these firms to come to a meeting unless it was a very extreme large project and it was uh, concerns when the board wanted them here. We have an in-house engineer, uh, so that, that, that'll be handled from our in-house engineer as far as meetings go and stuff. And as far as efficiencies, we broke it up to town as far as the three. We thought these three firms were the best in these areas that are listed here because of the size of our town and the uh, efficiencies that these firms brought in the interview process and what they do and, and how they do it. I mean, um, it's hard to explain up here from the dais on how this all, all went down, but this wasn't something that was just decided overnight. This process has been going on since November, uh, and we have went through numerous firms. I think it was at least 15 firms, if not more, that applied originally, you know. So I mean, this is. And I get that. I just don't understand why you're making a change to a higher, is that something that's going to cost us more? Were you guys dissatisfied with our? Our engineering firm. Uh, I'm not gonna. Make because you know, I have to believe a lot of these things are going to overlap, and now instead of having one group of people working on a project, we're going to have three, or you know, possibly. I, this doesn't make any sense to me. I, honestly, I think you. I like to sit down and, and see how you, how you come up with. You know, how do you lay it out? Do you have a plan? Uh, you know, um, I'm not sure if that's something I talked to the finance more person about I'd like to see your how you what's your analysis I really would because I don't see this I, I you're gonna I don't want to cost more money I don't want to be spending more money on something that is unnecessary one of the things that I found quite interesting is that you're talking about mr. Neumeyer said if we don't like the bid the board can reject it if we think it's too high but you're not even going out for an RFP so we have nothing to compare it to. Getting the three bids in makes more sense to me than just saying, uh, Joe Bag of Donuts engineering firm, here's what I want to you know, charge you. And the board can either say yes or no. It, that makes absolutely no sense. And to go with a, a firm that is so much higher priced and say it's just the overall total number in the contract, well, that overall total number in the contract is based on what they're paying their people. <coughs> and if they're asking us to pay more, that's more tax dollars out of my pocket. I can't take any more of this. We are, we are just taxed beyond belief in this town. And like Ms. Galante just said, what's the reasoning behind wanting to make this change and especially going to a firm that is so much higher? When you, you've just said that all three of them are qualified to do all parts of the different areas that you've broken them into. Now, if engineering company A falls behind and engineering company B can't get their part done, they're going to start charging us for having their guys sitting around doing nothing. When you've got lap overlapping things like that, it's just like building a house. If one trade doesn't show up, the other one can't do their job. So what's the reasoning behind wanting to do this and not even go out for RFPs on things that are over $20,000? As Trustee Glatt said, you know, if that's what is going to be a number, anything over 20000 you should be getting proposals. 
I do it all the time at work. I just came back from one. There were seven different companies there all bidding on the same job, my company included. Well, why would we not do that here? Uh, we can't. <clears throat> it's not mean, allowed by law. You can't they, get bids? Um, for, there's basically a state law called the uh, Qualified Base Selection Process. When you're basically choosing an engineer or an architect or professional service like that, you cannot hire somebody based on, based on cost. You have to go through, and that's <laughs> what we did last year. We went through essentially a process where we uh, received a number of, of qualifications, we interviewed a number of firms, and you basically we essentially set this list up of the three firms we, were, we thought that were the most qualified. But you can't, you can't choose a professional service like that based on cost. And, and frankly, I would argue you don't want to. You want, well, to, you want to base it based on their qualifications. And you know, we've done that with, with legal firms. Sometimes we've gone and we've used legal firms at a higher hourly rate because they have a specialty and they're good in an area. So it's... I think you just, when you're looking at something like engineers, attorneys, I think, one, we legally can, even if we wanted to. It's, but basically, you've got to look at the service you're getting. And that's Well, that's if you what we're put out an here. RFP, you're setting the parameters of the service. You can't. Each one of them would come in and say, to do X, Y, and Z, it's going to cost X amount of dollars. And whatever firm ha comes in, if you're, as long as you're bidding it out apples to apples, I don't see do why it. you can't do that. It's against the law. What law? I mean, the where is it written? Give me I'll something. I'll get you. I'll get you. Just, yeah. Because I, I, I don't buy that. I will get I'm you sorry. the sorry. It just seems ludicrous that as a village, we can't dictate where our dollars are going to go. And you're automatically going to pay somebody more just because? Nothing. Can I ask another Follow up right, question? Sure. If we have three bidders, and like I said, preferred bidders, you could pit them right. against each other, could the engineer who knows whatever project he wants to do say to all three, What would you charge me to do this? Would that violate the terms of the bidding thing? I, I mean, you've got basically three preferred, you know, qualified. I'm going to have to... Yeah, I, I don't know, sitting up here, Mike, it's an interesting question. I could look at it and get back to you. Um, I, I don't know, sitting up here. Yeah. I, I don't have the answer to that. Is this something that, I mean, is there a rush on this? Is it possible we could kind of table it and get those answers? I, I and again, I, I don't know what the rush is. I don't know what your project schedule looks like. Right. I, I just, my guess is there's probably some summer work that needs to be done. Right. Right. That's all I know. And right. You're going to get proposals on it anyway, and, you know, I all good conversation tonight, without a doubt. The one thing that you're missing, if, if there's a proposal for every project, which I think some towns do it, not not towns that, that I've been associated with, if you go out yeah. for engineering services on every single project, the, the, there's an additional cost to that too. You know, there's staff costs that has to yep. prepare that RFP. You know, they're going to send it over, you know, to legal for us to look at. Then we got to, you know, then you have to determine, and that all may be worth it. I'm not saying it's not, but you know, th this idea and I, my thought is when you guys put this idea together to go with the preferred firms is you know, you're still getting those you know, proposals not to exceed dollar amounts for what your projects are going to cost. And I think if you have one of the companies that you like has too high a rates, I think you go to ask them and see if they can bring them down. But I, I, I would echo what Dave said. just. I, the proposals that I've usually seen for, you know, you're going to get, a, you know, let's say you guys are doing roadway between, you know, whatever stretch of roadway you're doing, the proposal you'll get from an engineer, they don't often have the breakdown of, you know, the fees. That they're they're going to say, here's the work, and however they get there, as Trustee Glott said, they might have a formula they plug in. I don't know how they get there, but you're going to get a fee that says 45000 or $145,000, whatever it is. Um, you know, so there's there's two ways to go about it. You you could bid everyone out, but there is going to be a cost to that. It may be the way you want to go, but there will be a cost to that. Yeah, we need to have the the bills broke down because we're never going to know how much more we're paying. We know we'll know on the hourly rate, but we won't know right. on how many hours. That's the problem. Did did you have their hourly rates before the uh, you chose the three firms? You can't do that. No, again, you can, based on the, the the state law, you can't. 
you can you can't ask their hourly rate until you're negotiating yeah, with them. So negotiate yeah. the rates. Sorry, I, mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I my thought would be I yes. I, you know, I think yeah, you can always yeah. ask you can people that are vendors so. for the village to lower the rates. I, you know, but I'll double check it. Yeah. It's something to look at. All right. So we basically chose them after we saw their rate chart. Okay. Mr. Stuckley. Yeah, I'm just going to sound repetitive here. Um, Robinson's been around for, have they been around for maybe longer than 30 years? Yeah, because I've been, since I've been around, I mean, I've been around Timmy all my life, and I always remember hearing Robinson. Um, people have been harping about trying to lower our taxes. Can you do something about it? And obviously, this is not going to lower our taxes. This is going to raise our taxes. Um, Baxter, you said that they're going to do the water. Okay, uh, I believe Baxter was the engineering firm for, for Crestwood before. I'm not going to go into that, but we all know what happened there. So, um, and this is my opinion, and people aren't going to like it, but I think it's a political move. It's definitely a political move. Pardon me? This process began with the last administration. But the, the last administration did not make the final decision here. They didn't listen to us either. I would disagree with you. I believe the three were picked back then. Pardon me? I back believe the November. three firms were picked back when the last no, administration No, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I understand that. I'm just saying the, pre, the previous administration, they're not making the decision tonight, which makes sense. So it's not a political but move. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's an And also, Burke is... Are they from Orland Park? Are they doing work in Orland Park? I believe that they are an engineer of Orland Park as well as a sub substantial. And you guys are from Orland? No, I'm from Tilney Park. Oh. Did Just you ever work for Orland or Orland no, Township? I never worked for Orland Park. Orland Township. I was a trustee. No, of Orland Robinson Township. Engineering is okay. an yeah, engineer Robinson for Orland Township. Is the firm in Orland Township. Yeah, I know. I read up on Robinson, but okay, it's so just uh, I still think it's politics. Thank you. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'd like to give hereby uh, notice for a special meeting uh, for the Public Safety Committee of the Village of Tinley Park, uh, beginning at uh, 647. To open the meeting, I'd like to consider approval of the minutes of the Public Safety Committee meeting held on uh, June 13th at 2017. So moved. Second. Would you like to take a roll call? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I'd like to discuss uh, item number three, discuss the uh, neighborhood watch program, uh, reading all the uh, past information, uh, working with uh, the chief. Um, gave quite an extensive report on it. Uh, chief, I'd like to turn this to you and see what we have to say about that. Uh, thank you. So about a year ago, actually, Mr. Uh, Glatz and another gentleman came to us about starting a neighborhood watch program, and the Village of Tinley Park had a neighborhood watch program in years past, which was based on the classic 1972 model of how to do a neighborhood watch program, which was prior to, um, you know, it was, it was back when, when moms didn't work and uh, kind of the coffee clutch, invite a policeman over kind of thing and discuss local issues and, and try and reduce crime and, and get some community engagement. Uh, we carried that program on through the years and it, it sort of waned. And uh, I think around 2005, uh, the interest was so low in the program that we really changed directions and went to a neighborhood watch meeting we'd have twice a year, which continued to when I started in 2012. And the last one of those meetings we had, we had about 10 to 20 guests showed up out of a community of 57,000. So that part of the program really sort of uh, drifted off. Um, a part of Neighborhood Watch, and, and one of the goals is for crime prevention, and we do have several crime prevention programs, which I listed in the report, uh, and also new ways to contact people uh, through media and our whole media department in the village, things like that. So when I talked to uh, Mr. Glatz in uh, last year, 
we thought that perhaps we could do a better uh, job of advertising this and we've upgraded our um, uh, website and uh, we have a speakers bureau we have all these programs all these ways to communicate with people uh, to try and kind of do a modern version of neighborhood watch um, and uh, that's all listed in the program here and uh, I'm open to any kind of improvements. Um, I would suggest uh, there was a concern when this put on, was put on the agenda that there's people that have some, maybe some input and some ideas. And I would certainly suggest we sit down and vet what we have and see if it's applicable today. And uh, if they have new ideas, I'm, I'm all on board. If you would like to perhaps make this an offline uh, discussion with those citizens and we'll look at it and see what we can do to improve it. Yes, that seems to be the uh problem uh, not your report but certainly having citizens step up they all want it but nobody seems to want to uh, uh, at this point in time to step up and uh, uh, join in the community we will have some open discussion if we have folks here that are concerned about the neighborhood watch yeah, I don't think chief it's more about people wanting to get involved I, I think it's more of using our resources like we we spoke last year about you know, use now we have this code red. Maybe, you know, zoning areas like, um, you know, something happens at 175th and Ridgeland. You have it set where you know whatever your parameters are. All those people, if there's a break in or something, everyone in that area gets a phone call. Everyone you know can sign up for it. Whether they get notifications through their home being called, their cell phones, uh, email, you know, however they, you know, whatever's the easiest way to contact them. Like I said last year, I think that's one of the best ways, and and shoot it out on social medias. No, I, you know I understand, and uh, yeah. I'd be happy to sit down and talk to anybody. You know, we, there may be gaps in our communications program, but you know all the the things that a police department should have, the modern crime prevention programs. I, I think we touch base on on all of them, and uh, once again we made some improvements since we talked last year, and be happy to sit down and, and look at it again. Any other comments from the board? Okay, we can open up to the public. Hi guys, I just want to let you know, Chief, that I started my own block program. I started, the it's just for 65th Avenue. And the problem is, is I don't know everything that's going on in town or the people on my block to let them know. So I think part of the crime prevention is to if there was a dedicated place that people could go to to get accurate information and not hear about coyotes, no <laughs> offense, but instead of hearing about coyotes, you know, they would help. But I started my own. No, I, I, and it's I and it's working great. We use it more for lost dogs and kids playing hide and seek, and one doesn't want to get found. But I mean, <laughs> or when we have to do detours because of the construction but yeah we use it all the time no I understand and one of the challenges is we handle 30,000 calls a year so I come in every morning and try and read every case report and that's an hour hour and a half of a day just to you know right. get my arms around what happened in the last 24 hours so it gets it's a lot of information that's the problem and filtering and getting it out is is in a timely manner sometimes that's tough yeah and I'm not concerned about yes I'm let me take that back I, I'm concerned about what happened at the amphitheater the other night, but I'm not concerned about that from a neighborhood crime prevention. Correct. You know, but to find out things on, got to wait for the patch. It just would have been nice if we knew ahead of time. That's all. I understand. You know, but if we if everybody started their own block program, we'd be golden, wouldn't we? I'd like to commend you for starting your own program. Well, uh, thank you, sir. Very nice. Hi, uh, my name is Karen Tabol. I've been here like 30 years and I was on the original committee back in the 90s that we started and yes that was before social media and we used to print out newspapers and we had everybody in the neighborhood passing them putting them in the uh, post box and everybody knew per subdivision what was going on and when July 2nd garage was broken into now we have to come up with a different avenue just like I found out a lot most people work now well they have dog walkers meaning they hire somebody well, there's a national program out if your police department belongs to NATA they will free of charge send out training 
uh, information. Um, I think it's CDs and some other things. And for no cost, bring in the dog walkers because they're kind of our ears. They're out there during the day. If they see a gate open, a door open, they can call police. They actually train them on what to look for, what is out of the ordinary calling. So that's one of the programs that is out there for us. But we hit, from what I'm gathering from the people on social media, they want a neighborhood watch. They're really frustrated. They want to get the information today, not two weeks later finding out that three doors down, the garage was broken into. So somehow we've got to uh, do a better job of communicating with our citizens because they're getting frustrated and they're all saying, well, what's happening with the town? You know, we, we've got so much crime now and they want to help, but they're frustrated because we don't have any type of program set in stone. And maybe part of that is getting some people on the committee again, like a mayor or somebody else, and going to the different events <clears throat> in the town and explaining what there is for them, because I don't think they know. Okay. And I think that's part of the problem. And if you're gonna have a committee on the set, I'd be more than happy to you know, share what we did before and what I think we should be doing now with social media and everything else. What, whether that's a web page, because everybody's complaining, well, please don't really have a web page of their own, so maybe we can come up with something. Understood. And Mike has my not na my name and phone number, so you can get a hold of me. The chief, I gave it to uh, Dave Niemeyer. He has her information. <coughs> okay. I'd like to uh, invite all the citizens to uh, join us August 1st at uh, Rocky Plaza for our national night out. Okay. I think it's our 27th year or whatever, so get a chance and uh, join us. It's a great night out, a uh, great event for the community to uh, catch up on uh, different programs and different things that are being done uh, within the community on National Night Out Against Crime. Anyone else? Okay, I can make a motion to uh, uh, close the meeting. So Second. Moved. I'd like to have a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And the ayes have it. So ordered.